I just added a title. They're talking about go add a title. Just go live. They say we're live. And <laughs> Okay, here we are, we are live. <laughs> okay, so let me share it. To Julia Wallace. We're live. Hey everybody watching, how are you? How are you? Please forgive our tardiness. Um, me and technology, we good, but I still have a little bit more to learn. Um, so let's just get in it too, uh, since we're already 10 minutes late. <laughs> Hi, I am uh, Naturally Cinnamon. I am the founder and CEO of Jamila Wellness, LLC, um, where women go to be well and live beautifully. You can find me online at uh, jamilawellness.org. And I am joined tonight by a phenomenal mental health advocate by the name of Suzanne Joseph. And she is joining me tonight to talk about something very interesting. And that is closure. Whether we need it, when do we need it? Why do we need it? Do we even yeah. need it? <laughs> and all this other stuff. So I'm gonna give Suzanne a moment to introduce herself. Hi everyone, I am Suzanne Joseph. I am the founder of the Redirect Your Choices program. Redirect Your Choices empower women to promote wellness in their life, physically, mentally, spiritually. And by doing that, they are able to find a renewed perspective, purpose, and they're able to create positive results. From that, they are able to restore their lives and they're able to be released to do greater and be greater. Um, I'm also the owner of Personal Lifestyle Management. We handle all your staffing needs. And I am your wellness strategist, Suzanne Joseph, and speaker and author of the Redirect Your Choices Journal. Yes. 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 <laughs> a lot. That's a the mouthful there, girl. But yes. all, all good stuff. It's all good stuff. So Ooh, I'm excited. Ooh, okay. I don't even know where to start because in our little pre-conversation, our pre-live conversation, it started to get a little bit good. So the question that spawned this whole, what are we now, three weeks long conversation? Yes. Is a post that you made. What was that post that you made asking, um, do you think that you need closure in order to move on? Uh, it's, I'm paraphrasing it a lot. No, yeah, you're right. That's what it was. It was posted uh, once in a, you know, once a month I do, you know, these uh, dear mental health expert letters to get opinions based on conversation I have you know, with my girlfriends. So I asked the question, do you think closure is necessary to grow and move on and become a better person? Or can you do without it, basically? Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of, you know, these life coaches and therapists came in and gave some great advice. But when you came in, you not only did you provide advice, you said, hey, go check out my website. You get what I'm saying? I have something on there based on that. Man, cinnamon, when I touch that ebook on seven steps to closure. I said, oh my God, oh my God. How can I not get people to come on and join this experience? So yes, today we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about it and we're gonna see who wants to join us in this experience because some people don't want it and some people do need it. So we're gonna see what's gonna happen. What's gonna happen? What's up? Let us see. So let's yes. dig in <laughs> um closure you know the one thing i will say is when people hear the word closure the first thing that comes to mind for most people is relationships breakups mm -hmm. um split ups things of that nature um you can need closure around quite literally anything yeah you can find yourself needing closure around anything it could your closure could just be gaining understanding mm -hmm. of an experience it could simply be that so yes i'm a therapist and yes we are you know talking about this from a mental health perspective but i'm not on the clock technically so we, <laughs> we can talk about some personal things as well 
listen, listen. <laughs> Let us um, go. You know, there are people that <laughs> they request autopsies of loved ones who passed away because they want to know how did they die. That is a form of receiving closure. It doesn't always have to be something that revolves around the dramatic or something that revolves around a lot of different things. But I think uh, I think that people, many people think that closure, when they think they're seeking closure, what they're actually seeking is validation. Yeah. And what they're actually seeking is, see, I knew it. I told you. I, it, it, it's true. It's true. Hold on. Hold on. Are you seeking validation or are you seeking closure? Because <laughs> they may not be one and the same. They may be two different things. They may they may marry each other, but they might really be two very, very different things. So, yeah. I mean, that's what it is for me. Like, when I look at the whole thing of closure, it's, you know, me having a conversation with some girlfriends and saying, hey, you know, I think this person just, you know, deserve closure or, you know, maybe you should have, you know, close this door with this individual. And you look back and you say, but I'm doing okay. I'm in a great place. These people not being around me don't bother me. So why should I open up that can, uh, can of worm and invite this person back into my life to give them something they they might be yearning for or they might not be yearning for could i be doing damage to myself you, you so know the question saying? is whether or not to provide someone else with closure yeah you know they want you know there's some people that i could be looking for closure for myself where it comes you know like you said as far as relationship maybe with a friendship but let's try to look at it a different way you get what i'm saying what if I'm okay with myself and I don't want the closure? You know what I'm saying? And that individual does want that closure that I have that friction with, but I'm in a good space. You get what I'm saying? And I feel like inviting that individual in will, you know, kind of sh uh, shake up that energy that I have going on right now, that positive vibe I have going on. Do you feel like I'm hindering myself from growth by not allowing this person this closure? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, that got good fast. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> that got good quick. Do I think that in that situation, well, I would say that you really have to first acknowledge that closure, clo mm, how do I say this? Whoever's seeking the closure, that's their journey. That's mm -hmm. their journey. That's not your journey. You don't, you don't really weigh a decision in that. That's if I'm seeking closure, that's because I need it and I'm seeking it. But right. if I feel where should I, or should I not provide someone else with closure? First of all, how do I even know that they are looking for it? Right. That's first of all, they could be just as fine as I am <laughs> with, <laughs> you know, with unanswered questions. So right. you, you, know, you could be interrupting their energy like why are you calling me now like leave me alone that's it so i mean let's not what i want to do is be is caught be cautious that we don't start to think as though well i hold the key to someone else's growth don't do that don't be careful with that be very careful with that um so the next thing i would say would it hinder your growth not to provide that person with closure? So let's come up with a situation. Let's say somebody came to you seeking closure from a situation that you don't even want to touch anymore. I don't see what is so wrong with saying, I don't, you know, I'm good. I'm in a good space. Rehashing that could potentially put me in not so good of a space. Um, rehashing it on your terms would put me in not so good of a space. The sacrifice that I would then be making is sacrificing my sanity and my good, my good space to yeah. potentially put you in a good space. See, that's how we kind of got to where we are right now. <laughs> yep. Okay. That's how we got to where we are right now. I don't want to continue repeating that negative cycle. So let me think about it. If I think I would like to have the conversation with you, I'll let you know. 
um, I hear your, your ask. I hear your request. I just can't promise you that I can fulfill that request. But should you feel some way if you hurt that individual by, by not giving them that? Like, are you doing them a disservice? Like they're coming to you and this is something yes. they need. Are you, you doing them always, a disservice? You could always tell them that they can. Um, <laughs> seven steps to closure. They can, um, you know, register in the course of seven steps to seeking closure um, and let them know how much it helped you. <laughs> because let me tell you something. Not one step in these seven steps does it say reach out to another human being. Not it does not. once. Not one time. And tell them, send a man, tell them. Hey, look, I tell y'all, I connect myself to therapists. I am not a therapist, okay? I am a wellness strategist and I've learned how to implement wellness in my I'm saying so that's why I connect this is why therapy is needed so you can find and get that understanding you need because what caught me actually when I actually went in and checked out the seven step closure process is when you said that you begin to create these assumptions in your mind and when you create these assumptions you begin to assume what did happen and you start to rattle your mind trying to figure it all out mm -hmm. when you just kind of just need to stop take it like you said Take a step back. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? Breathe. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Let's think through. Now I'm, I'm presenting the opportunity for these individuals that cannot think this through in their mind because we know we think a lot. Our thoughts is our actions, people. Lord, have mercy. So we think a lot. So I'm connecting with Cinnamon because I'm trying to provide an opportunity for people that are in a battle with their self trying to say, should I reach out to this person and have closure? Should I let them be? Because it's affecting me because I don't understand what I need to do. You know what I'm saying? This is why we're here. This is why we're having this conversation because we're, we want to open that door and that opportunity. You know what I'm saying? For growth. That's the level we're on. Growth. Mm -hmm. Closure. So, it's necessary. I'll give you, Come on, Senator, give it to I'll me. give the people the, an example of <laughs> How I, because I had a situation, a past relationship years ago. I mean, years ago. <laughs> Thank God it was years ago. Um, where I literally just walked away. Did not give an explanation. Did not have a whole conversation about it. Just because I knew sticking around long enough to have a conversation or do any of those things was going to actually end up more toxic and was going to be more damaging to me. So it the best bet, clean break, get out. <clears throat> and that's exactly what I did. Mm -hmm. Clean break, get out. That person, that young man blamed me. He said I was leaving him for another man. All right, okay. If I mean, if that's what you wanna say, okay. The truth is I, I left you because I found out that you were married and you did not tell me the document that you showed me about your divorce was falsified, <laughs> but apparently you thought that I was not going to ever find that out. Mm -hmm. uh, I ain't nobody's mistress, baby. So there's really nothing to discuss. <laughs> like this, for me, I was like, there's no conversation to have. You have a wife, you have your conversations with her. I'm out, peace, deuces, I'm gone. So for me, there was no closure necessary. The closure was you're married. That, that's the end of that. <clears throat> Year, let me see, one, two, two, I think, two years, two or three years later, I get an email. Because when I walked away from that, when I say block city, block on every social media, block on phone, text, emails were blocked. You, he, when I, he didn't, I had moved. He didn't know where I moved to. <laughs> complete cut snip done about two to three years later I get an email from another woman not the wife not him some other woman <laughs> oh my god <laughs> wow a whole other woman who wanted to ask me who wanted to inquire about um whether you know my past relationship with him and she wanted to know this than the other and I was like digging that up is not something I'm even interested 
in doing, <laughs> even if that means she becomes the next mistress. Like, I'm just going to be real. There are many people that would say, you owe her the truth. You should tell her what she's getting into. <laughs> I mean, but I'm not her mama. I'm not even her friend. I don't so you know that to her. I'm like, I don't even know her. For all I know, she's just fine being somebody's mistress. For all I know, he, he actually got the divorce. I don't know because I'm not connected and I don't want to be. I don't want to know anything. So <laughs> it took me a good two days to reply, but I did reply to her. And I decided that I was only going to broach that conversation on my terms because what you or anyone else is gonna, not going to do is damage my mental wellness. You're not going to do that. I will protect it at all costs. You will Amen. not do my mental wellness. All the work that I've done to become the woman I am today, you ain't coming for her. You're not coming for her. You or him, especially him. You're not coming for her, for who I have become. So I let her know. I said, well, listen, babe, this is what I'm going to do. Because what I was not about to do is put myself in a situation where I say anything to her and she take it back to him and he paint a picture of me. See, I'm not going to get it. I'm not getting involved with all that. I'm not, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm not, <laughs> I'm doing none of the things, none of the things. So I did tell her, I said, well, this is what you do. You get three questions. You will email me those three questions, but you will CC him on the email. Matter of fact, no, what I said was you need to go to him. Let him know that you have contacted me because he probably don't even know. I'm not getting involved in none of that. Let him know that you've contacted me. You two decide what y'all disagree on and you need me to clear up. You get three questions, Max. You can email me those questions, CCing him because what I'm not gonna do is get involved in no, he said, she said, yeah, that's not true. That is true. That, mm, I mm. I'm grown, honey. I, don't, I ain't doing all that. I ain't do that when I was in high school. What make you think I'm doing it now? And I'm grown, I'm grown grown. I ain't fake grown, I'm real grown. Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. I want you to know to this day, that was about five years ago. I have not heard back from sister girl. Wow. Because what you, I'm not going to allow it. You will only come to me on my terms or don't come mm. at all. Cause you're not going to jeopardize it. So when you've got somebody that you, is seeking some sort of closure and it's going to damage you, you set the term. Mm -hmm. You set the boundaries for your mental well being and your emotional well being your spiritual well-being you set the terms and say if we go beyond this boundary the potential is i'm gonna be all off and guess who's not gonna get off i'm not doing that again yeah and that's exactly how i feel yeah so that's a you set the terms for that you don't you you don't have to do it to do, for what what are you trying to prove <laughs> you know that would be my thing what are you trying to prove by <laughs> Putting if I would have on to save another person again. And for me, if I, if I have to be told to provide someone some closure for me, it's going to be validation. I already know me. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's for me to prove myself and say, I know I didn't do anything wrong. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's the main thing. Like when a lot of my relationship, it's, uh, you know, when I found this newfound love, you know what I'm saying? And relationship with God you get what I'm saying and I'm not saying I had never been baptized I've had been baptized mm -hmm. but I found this new love you get what I'm saying and in my process you know he did he cleaned house you get what I'm saying he removed some people he felt like did not need to be in my life mm -hmm. when those things happen I'm not gonna say those things didn't hurt me you know what I'm saying they did break my heart to see to see someone yeah. Uh, that you do love for God to say this person is not about you right now and doesn't love you the way you think you know, they love you. And then for that relationship to end and for you to actually see the real actions and behavior of that individual and say to yourself, well, damn, you know, well, God, I see why, you know what I'm saying? Why are you asking me to remove this person? And then you say to yourself, you know what I'm saying? I still love this person, but I love them from afar. Yes, I can probably see this person is yearning to, you know, be close with me again, but that person have done some damaging things after the fact. And I feel like they don't deserve that anymore. They don't deserve to know the new Suzanne. Mm. 
And that's how I felt about that relationship. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How do you feel about that? I, I have no problem with that. I have no problem with that because of what you actually did was um, the first step in the seven steps, which is check your emotions. You just admitted that if you were to do a deep dive back into something that you had closed yourself off of, it was for the purpose of seeking validation. Validation and closure are not, that, that's not the same process. That's not mm-hmm. the same process. And so why open yourself back up to, okay, you may get the, the validation that you're seeking, but now you've opened mm-hmm. yourself back up to stuff before that you had healed or are in the healing process of. Mm-hmm. And I have to ask why, for what? The validation, was that important? <laughs> And that's how I started looking at myself. Like, is it really that important to tell yourself what you saw? You get what I'm saying? What you knew happened. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. We moved on. It didn't affect my life. And that's how I feel like, I feel like if anything haven't affected or shifted my life, I don't Mm -hmm. need to pay it any attention. Especially if it didn't bring me down and I'm only getting better and becoming greater. Mm -hmm. I don't need to give that type of energy, that attention. Let me tell you, one of my favorite, I'm going to call it a closure song. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think it is, but it is for me, is Chrisette Michelle's Blame It On Me. Mm -hmm. When I tell you, blame it on me. Say it's my fault. Say that I left you outside in the cold with a broken heart. I really don't care. (laughs) I ain't crying no more. Say I'm a lie, a cheat, say anything that you want as long as it's over. Mm -hmm. You can get to a point where it's like, because mind you, this man who had a whole wife, a whole entire wife, started telling people I left him for another man. (laughs) Oh my gosh. And my whole thought was, that was the best you could come up with? Like, you could have said quite, if you're going to lie, you could have said quite literally anything. That's the lie you came up with. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> now, a piece of me did want to seek validation by saying, well, this document that I found proves that he is married and he lied and blah, 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 blah. For what? I just want to not be here. So, okay. Hmm. For what? Me get validation at the, at the risk of my peace? Nah. Hmm. (laughs) Nah. No. (laughs) And let me tell you, no. No. And that's why I think a lot of people disagree with seeking closure because they think that it sacrifices your peace or has a potential to sacrifice your peace if, or your growth, as you said, if you go back and revisit something that mm-hmm. you already canceled. I say it depends. It's not that cut and dry. I say it depends. It depends on your level of growth. I have former I have people who have done me when I say wrong I mean it's affected my credit Mm -hmm. I mean they have said some things and spread it as far as anyone who has ears and can Mm -hmm. listen they'll say it even if that person they say it to don't even know me all of this do you trust me I know to those people I will still speak, but you won't know my life. Mm-hmm. You don't know me. Something we talked about in our pre-live conversation is positions. Mm-hmm. And it's something I don't know why people don't understand this because it's not really a hard concept. Um, any position that you hold in any situation comes with a set of expectations. Any position mm-hmm. you speak they're go- that person wants to know, can you uphold the expectations? Can you fulfill the expectations of said position? That's mm-hmm. just kind of the way it is. So here you are. I want to be a teacher. 
well, here are the expectations. Can you fulfill these expectations? Mm-hmm. Here, here I am. Let's say I'm hiring somebody. I have certain expectations for them, but I know that as their employer, they have certain expectations of me too. So we need to have a conversation. That's what the interview is to even know. So we could spell out what the expectations are and see if we're both willing to meet the expectations. So if we're talking about friends, mm-hmm same situation you want to hold a position of friend in my life that comes with a certain that comes with a certain list of expectations now mind you the the list of expectations to be cinnamon's friend and the list of expectations to be suzanne's friend might not be the same expectations we set our own expectations based on our life experiences our personalities the things that we need emotionally from our friends people who we hold close to us people who are in our circle blah 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 there's certain expectations that I have. And likewise, if you want to be friends with me, there's certain expectations that you would have of me. So we need to know what, what do you, what kind of friend are you? What kind of friend do you want to be? Cinema, I tell people that all the time. I literally preach that about setting expectations because I'm one of those individuals when I didn't really have much friends like that. I told mm-hmm. myself that if I'm going to accept anybody new into my life, I need to know what they're expecting from me so I can let them know I cannot give that to you. So yes, I might have limited friends, you get what I'm saying? But, you know, now we know each other's boundaries. Mm -hmm. They know my space. I know their Mm -hmm. space. They know not to knock on my door 10 o'clock at night. Like I tell, you know, people all the time, set expectation because you might want me to call you every night and I might not want to do that. You get what I'm (laughs) saying? You might have a problem if I don't call you for a whole week and I'm okay if you don't call me for a whole week. You get what I'm saying? Because I'm okay with that. Right. What is it that you so I tell people that, Like, what is it that you need from yeah. a friend? And guess what? When our lives are in different stages, then it could be different. When our lives are in different stages, the things that we need and expect from people can be different. They don't always have... To... It's amazing. My best friend and I have been best friends since we were nine years old. Mm-hmm. we both 40 that is a 31 year friendship our expectations of each other have shifted and changed over the years we've just been able to meet each other's expectations and what we need from each other we're able to meet those needs so we're able to maintain this best friendship no problem I don't even know how many friends I don't have anymore because like you said when you reach a certain level of growth your needs and expectations from the people that are in your life are no longer the same. Mm -hmm. They're not the same. Whereas at one point in life, I needed somebody to go to the club with me. Now I need to know, can you pray with me? Whereas at one point in life, I needed to, you know, I needed to know, you know, when we're young, we want a boyfriend. You need to have a certain kind of car and you need to, now I need to know when things get hard, are you going to run out the door? That's what Uh I mean. Like the needs are different. And the expectations are different. Mm-hmm. Can we meet those expectations? Well, I'm looking and for friends. The answer is no. Then the answer is just no. That doesn't make you a horrible person. You just have, you just at a different, you're at one place. I'm at one place. I respect the place in life that you're at, but I need you to respect the place in life that I'm at. And maybe we just not going to flow. Maybe we just not going to flow right now. What about those relationships where you guys just kind of drifted and just stopped talking? Like, I know for me, like I used to have those friendships where I was that always that one person that would, you know, get everybody get together and reach out to everyone. Hey, just checking up on you. How are you? But Mm -hmm. I went through a a trial in my life where I actually started testing my friendships to see if, you know, we were reciprocating. Mm -hmm. And I realized when I stopped reaching out, when I stopped calling, Till this day, none of them reached out. You know what I'm saying? And I think it does bother me a little. So maybe mm-hmm. I, you know, that's what I'm going to do through during my closure experience with you with that. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It does bother me because these are individuals that I cared about, individuals that I love, individuals that helped me grow as a person. Mm-hmm. And I know they follow me on social media. You know what I'm saying? And, and not once have they yet reached out. You know what I'm saying? Should I... As always, when people always say, Suzanne, you know, you're, you know, be the bigger person. And all my life, that's all I've been is the bigger person. In this instance, do I still need to be the bigger person? I saw they weren't going to reach out. I saw they weren't going to call. 
Should I have closure with myself and just tell myself, all right, Suzanne, you know, obviously you, you don't, you, you're probably not that important to them. You know what I'm saying? So maybe you need to find one with yourself and say, you know, it's time to move on. Things have shifted and people have grown and people now have their own lives. You know what I'm saying? It's okay for me to step for myself. Um, again, not a cut and dry answer, (laughs) (laughs) you know, and I think that so many people are looking for just a quick tip here and there, or what should I do? Do this. Okay. And it's not always that it's very rarely Mm -hmm. that simple. Um, um, and like I was sharing with you, I have a friend who I always said, if I ever got married, that my best friend would be my number one maid of honor and sh- this woman would be my number two. Like, so I've always considered her that close to me. Funny, now that I'm saying that, I don't think I've ever expressed that to her. <laughs> That's okay. Is that a letter now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I told her that. But one thing I know about her is that when she needs space, she's going to take that space. She's not going to announce it. She's not going to be like, listen, you may not be able to find me for it. She, she, when she needs space from the world, she's going to take it. And I understand that. So there may be a good six months pan that, that I don't hear from her. And I know that all I need to know during that time is if I reach out to you and say, Hey, you okay? That you taste bad. Say, yeah, I'm good. I just need to... no, no worries. No worries. During COVID-19, however, I need to know, I need everybody to respond. <laughs> like, I need to know where, it, when I reach out, I need everyone to respond. And she was not responding. And that's when I, when I realized her phone numbers had changed, her email addresses were bouncing back. And I was like, <laughs> what's going on? I'm not okay with this. <laughs> What's going on? I was like, I am not okay with this. I need answers. I need closure. What happened? What's going on? What's the problem? What did I do? I was not okay with this. I reached out to a mutual connection and they gave me a new number for her. So I was in my feelings about the fact that she changed her number and didn't tell me. So I was in my feelings, heavily <laughs> in my feelings. And I reached out to her and then another two or three days went by still without her responding. So I was like, oh my God, is that it? Like, is she done with me? Like, oh my God. So I was like, ain't this about a blimp? We just had a conversation <laughs> about going live to talk about closure and I find myself needing closure. So I'm like, this is insane. I just kind of stepped back Mm -hmm. it wasn't my I wasn't I was like I'm not gonna get closure from this right now I know I'm not gonna get closure from this right right now in this moment so I just stepped back and I was like you know what maybe she's got a lot on her plate right now there's a lot Mm -hmm. going on in the world right now everybody's kind of like trying to figure life out as we're going maybe she just needs I don't know step back cinnamon pray about it Hope and pray, you know, the one thing I knew was that she wasn't like in the hospital with coronavirus because that mutual connection would have told me that, but she didn't say that. She was like, oh no, she's at work, here's her number. And I'm like, well, she didn't give me that number. So I, I kind of just was like, I have to find a way to not obsess about this. And that's one of the steps in seeking closure to answer you to piggyback on what you were saying, releasing the need to justify. We can't always have the answers to everything because we're trying to justify this and just, oh, well, that's why this happened. Oh, well, that's the reason behind that. We don't always have to need to know. We really don't. Sometimes the answer is just the answer. Sometimes the situation is just the situation. Right. We have a hard time accepting that. We as a people have a really, really hard time accepting that it is what it is. Mm -hmm. We'll say it, but we don't want to (laughs) accept it. (laughs) It is what it is, Sis. It is what it is. You know, I (laughs) came up with my dad answering certain questions with because I said so. Mm -hmm. I grew up with that. And what I didn't realize until I was an adult was that that taught me sometimes the answer is just the answer. Yeah. 
sometimes you are not privy to what the actual answer is. You are not privy to the reason behind the answer. Sometimes the thought process is beyond you. Mm -hmm. We as adults do it with our kids all the time. All the time, we're like, mm, this is more of an adult thing. I don't want, you know, I'm not going to saddle my child with it. So I'm just going to let them look. This is what the answer is. I can't go all the way into it with you right now, maybe later, some other time. But this is just what the answer is. Sometimes with our friendships, it's the same way. They're going through whatever it is they're going through. And for right now, I'm not at the top of your total. Point. Like, I'm not on your important people's list for whatever the reason is. And guess what? I'm maybe not privy to the, to the reason. Just, it just kind of, it is what it is. But like I said, we have a hard time accepting it is what it is. It's true. It's very true. It's very true. We want to know. Because I know. We want to know everybody. Like, <laughs> <laughs> when I came out of it, trying to rebuild relationships and friendships again, and people mm -hmm. seeing that you're out there again and saying, oh, she is out there. She is alive. You get what I'm saying? I started feeling some type of way, like, do I owe them some type of explanation? You get what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. then I started telling myself, you know, no, you don't owe anybody any explanation. No one, you know, reached out. No one checked for you. You know what I'm saying? So why are you checking for anybody else? Mm -hmm. You know, that's just as human beings, how our minds think. But then I have to ask myself, I was in a broken place and I wasn't thinking things through. Do they really do deserve an explanation? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot, you know, to be talked to a and lot of situations. You, like you just, people you were in a broken place at the time. Right. You're in a healthy place now. So right. if you feel healthy enough to circle back to those, to that person or those people and say, listen, so I know I ghosted you. You may or may not be wondering why. I don't know. Like, cause they may not even be thinking about it. I, mean, I know, right? You they might not even be worried they about what's going on. They're just mad. Like, you know, it's you mad, might. So they're not reaching out. Yeah. So that's what you just said. You may or may not be wondering. Um, but I just, I, I needed to say this to you. I need to say to you. And if you're doing it because you're like, I just want, I'm at a place where I feel I need to do this. That's one thing. But if you're doing it because you know what? I did something and they probably need some closure from it. So I'm going to reach back. You don't know. I hate to say <laughs> this, but the truth is we make ourselves sometimes, we make ourselves so much more important than we actually are in other people's world. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't no for it. <laughs> we we if we're not careful can make ourselves so much more necessary in another person's life than they mm -hmm. actually are they they even think about so here i am thinking oh my god i did this horrible thing and this person was probably you know torn up about it and i need to reach back out to them and they're like i didn't even know i didn't even reckon what <laughs> What, what, are you, what are you talking about? What do you mean? So that's what I'm like, if it's for you and you need to do that for yourself, for your further growth, okay, I would say that. But if you're doing it because you're like, you know what? I was talking to my friend and she said that I need to reach out to so-and-so because they need closure. Hold on. Mm. Hold on. You don't know that. <laughs> you don't. You don't know that that person is in need of closure, and you don't know if they're even if they are. You don't know if they're ready to hear from you because they did not reach out to you. Mm -hmm. They may still I, be healing. If I'm calling to do some healing with you, and you give me that one quick little sideways talk, I'm gonna be like, "Have a nice day. Goodbye." But nice but day. you Goodbye. called and asked for that. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I'm calling. But I, I'm calling closure because i had somebody do it to me like i called for closure and i got the well back two months ago when i tell i'm like well that was two months ago we're at today and i'm telling you i was in a bad place and i'm better now and i'm trying to make this thing right and you still being catty i'm good but see remember cl their closure process is their closure i mean their closure experience is their closure experience they might not have been ready for it at that moment you calling someone to give them well they actually called me oh she called me. okay well that's different she, she wasn't looking for closure she was looking for validation yeah they called me 
see when that goes back to the first thing we said she wasn't yep. looking for closure she was looking for validation different mm -hmm. you calling me looking for validation baby okay whatever you feel like saying because what you're not gonna do is rattle me mm -hmm. not gonna rattle me and if you stand on this phone, okay, so I see you doing your best to rattle me. Okay, see, here's the beautiful part about a phone. I don't have to stay on it. <laughs> hey, look, click. Hey, I'm good for the hang up. Look. I don't have to stay I'm on it. Oh, wait. okay, so that's what you're trying to do. All right, bye. Yep. Mm -mm. I'm good for that. Mm -mm. Nope, 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 nope. So, I mean, as far as seeking closure, I will say this. I don't believe every situation requires a closure seeking process. Mm -hmm. I but agree. I also don't believe that no situation needs a closure seeking process. Like it really just depends. I'm mm -hmm. not saying it's not either or. It really honestly depends. It depends on the people, the situation, kind of how it went down and I've got, I mean, I even have some, a, a relationship in my life now. It's a familial relationship that I'm like, like you said, I'm good. <laughs> if we never speak, I'm good. The reason I'm there is because I know what would be necessary for true closure <laughs> and that person's not willing to go there. See, mm -hmm. I'm the type of person that I'm very comfortable with digging up under stuff to get to more stuff. And when you get to dig up under that too, and we're going to get down to the root of it, I'm very, I'm very open and I enjoy doing things like, hello, I'm a therapist. You know, I just, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy getting to the root of things. And mm -hmm. owning and admitting, even when it doesn't make you look good or doesn't shine you in the brightest light, I'm, I enjoy that. I know for that family member, because our stuff is so deep and goes so far back that we would have to do a lot of digging and that person is not willing. So for me, if you're not willing to do that, again, closure, my, my closure on my terms. Mm -hmm my communication on my terms you're not willing to go deep and get real then i can't do it then i can't do it so that's why i'm at a point where i'm like no you know who i i know when to my um ex-husband mm -hmm. i know that closure needed to happen because even though we were divorced, you know what I'm saying? He still wanted to try to find a way to mend the relationship. So, you know, we can become partners again. And I was already at a place where, no, I'm okay. You know what I'm saying? The relationship was too toxic. It was unhealthy for me. And I made that decision to go forward and live my life with my children. Mm -hmm. So for me, it felt so good when I had the opportunity and I just couldn't take it anymore. And I said, you know what, Suzanne? If you don't give him that closure and let him be okay with himself, I'm like, I forgive you. I forgive you for everything that you've done. You get what I'm saying? And I mean, so it felt good to be able to utter those words to him. And it made me feel so good inside. Oh, okay. But you were at a point where you were able to do that. He was able to, you were able to have the conversation you needed to have. He was mm -hmm. able to have the conversation he needed to have. And both of you were a, were in a place where you could hear the other person. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to have a closure conversation. Cause like I said, the seven steps to closure, not one of those steps includes contacting another person, not yeah. one of them. But if you are ready to have the closure conversation, which is another thing, mm -hmm. then that's a key component. You have to be in a place where you can clearly articulate what you need to say. That person needs to be at a point where they can clearly articulate what they need to say. And you both need to be ready and able to hear what the other person has to say. Right. Emotion removed. That vindication, validation, all of the justification, none of that stuff is present. Remote. Done. Gone. Not even there. So that we can actually have this conversation. Um, I have a set of friends that used to tease me because <laughs> they said that um, they said that they could not understand why I was still friends with all my ex-boyfriends. Okay, first things first. 
girls with all my ex boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> first of all let's be clear i am not friends with all my ex-boyfriends i don't like the word all i'm not friends with all of them <laughs> um i'm friends with two of them mm -hmm. one of them is a very very good friend because in our closure conversation post breakup and it took some time post breakup um in our closure conversation we owned that the only reason we got together is because we had mutual people in our lives that thought it would be a good idea. Prior to us dating, we didn't even really know each other. Wow. So we basically spent the time dating, getting to know each other and realizing while dating, this ain't it. <laughs> this ain't it. And, mm -mm. I mean, we, we cool, but... And we just doing it because people like it. Mm -hmm. So if that was the case and you didn't do anything to me and I didn't do anything to you, why we hate each other? Mm -hmm. Why were we mad for? Mm -hmm. Couldn't figure it out. Had no answer. So we were like, we, okay, then we could keep conversation, keep, keep the conversation going like we used to because we just, we cool. That's that. And we were able to, you know, create a friendship out of that. But that's because we were able to have the closure conversation. Now, there's some people that the closure conversation ain't going to be that, like I said, it's going to have some truths, going to have to be like, look. <laughs> look. No peaches and cream. Won't be some fire. <laughs> no peaches and cream. What, like, what, you, what, 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 uh, uh. <laughs> Type of conversation. <laughs> if if cinnamon is part of the conversation, oh, we're real. Yeah, we're we gonna dig into some stuff. But there are some people who, for them, it's unnecessary. For them, they're fine with you know, just you know what, I forgive you. We cool. That's that. <laughs> hey, if that's what works for you, then that's what works for you. I am not here to judge. I just know that wouldn't work for me. Amen. So, so like I said, I mean, this is to have this conversation. Like, I feel like it's needed. Like, whether somebody's, you know, relief, whether one uh, is confused about, you know, a certain friendship they have going on right now, whether it's an individual that's been, you know, molested, abused. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of people think, uh, especially with their abusers, that closure needs to be face to face, and no, it don't need to be. You know what I'm saying? It could be closer just within you. You know what I'm saying? And maybe they need to know that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe someone is telling them, oh, go, you know, confront your demons. Like, no, that doesn't necessarily need to happen. You know what I'm saying? If you want to, and that's something you need for yourself, like you said, then you approach it that way. But I mm -hmm. felt like this process was necessary and it was needed. And I can't wait to present the opportunity for, you know, five other individuals to come on and join us on the group closure experience with you it's going to be the go ahead. You, you already process. started go, so, go go come on like <laughs> I, I, i'm excited like that's what we want to do and actually ladybug media management Corey love wants to announce it for us um for redirect your choices but we're going to have you guys come join us on this journey and it is sponsored by redirect your choices and we're working hand in hand with mm -hmm. cinnamon keys the founder of jamila wellness she is a mental ther health therapist uh, mental health therapist and she's going to help all of us in this journey mm -hmm. every experience i'm partaking in it because it's beneficial to me as well and it's you know healing for me and it's good for me and my growth so mm -hmm. i will want to present that opportunity for individuals that probably can't you know afford the session uh with uh Jamila uh, with Cinnamon. I want you guys to join, you know, this journey with us. That's why we're doing this. We want to give you all the scenarios of what closure may look like to you or what the conversation looks like. So you can get a better understanding of what we're trying to do. Yes. Um, I, I'm excited for that, for the announcement of that. And I'll just say for um, anybody who may be interested in a session, to you know start the process to seeking some closure about yeah. something that really needed to be one-on-one -on -one, absolutely reach out to me um but you know we've got the there's three different kind of people there's the diy people god bless y'all y'all are the ones out here making these masks 
and figuring out how to get it done. Oh. And I am the, I'm no, then, <laughs> then, then there's the do it with me people who with you know, you're probably the pe- the person that is more interested in this class that, um, that will be announced formally announced, but it's kind of informally announced tonight, um, uh, through redirect your choices. So the do it with me group and the do it for me group you're gonna have to you're gonna have to do this for yourself <laughs> now i i can't get the closure for you we can't get the closure for you but like i said we can i we can help walk you through the process so the do it for me group this is for you the do it with me group this is for you the do it yourself group if you want to oh, do that go, <laughs> if you want to do that go to naturally and click <laughs> on the e-courses and take the e-course on the seven steps to seeking closure for those of you who are DIY. Um, so we have something for everybody, but I would love to see you all in the group that uh, redirect your choices is going to be announcing formally. If you would like to make sure that you are receiving that announcement when it goes out, simply inbox or DM um, or even just leave us your ad, your email address to either Suzanne or myself. Um, you can put it right in our inbox or you can put it right in the feed of this video, whatever you want to do. And we will make sure that you get that information. Amen. Amen. Jamila, thank you, Cinnamon, for inviting me on tonight. Ooh, I really enjoyed the conversation. Ooh, this was fun. Yes, it was a lot of fun. All I right, can't wait for <laughs> <laughs> all right now of course i have to figure out how to stop oh here we go stop